Good morning everyone. Welcome to this third lecture of module 5. If you recollect our discussion in the previous two lecture, we discuss about two different biochemical conversion processes that is anaerobic digestion and alcoholic fermentation. So, in this lecture, we will practice few example on the concept covered in this module. Before that, we will discuss one or two important topics that is principal factors involved in digester designing and that is related to the anaerobic digestion process and theoretical ethanol yield that is related to the alcoholic fermentation process. Because the digester sizing involves certain parameters or factors that need to be taken into consideration while sizing the digester that means while designing the digester. So, let us discuss about these principal factors or I would say the principal parameters that are important in sizing the digester. So, if you look at this particular slide here, so this schematic here it represent the digester which is used for the anaerobic digestion process. In that the input parameter that is mass of dry input represented as m suffix o, then density of dry matter in the fluid that is represented as and flow rate of digester fluid which is represented as q suffix f. So, in that this flow rate of digester fluid is one of the important factor that need to be taken into consideration while sizing this digester. Next is the digester fluid or digester slurry. So, in this case the volume of fluid in the digester that is V suffix f need to be estimated. Apart from that the density of dry matter in the fluid as just mentioned before that is also important followed by the retention time in the digester and it is represented as T suffix R and if you recollect our discussion in the previous lecture we discuss about this factor and we mention it as HRT that is hydraulic retention time and this particular factor is very crucial factor in the designing of the digester and the volume of the digester that is V suffix D. So, once we know this information then we can estimate the volume of the digester which is required for the specific flow rate of the digester fluid. And once these parameters are known then the gas which is released during this anaerobic digestion process need to be stored in a digester and for that reason the volume of the biogas need to be estimated for a specific source of feed material. And once we know the volume of the biogas then the fraction of methane in the biogas need to be estimated and this can be estimated using a standard analytical techniques and also the biogas yield per unit dry mass input that is represented as C and the biogas yield is also one of the important and the crucial factor which gives information about the biogas yield from a specific source material which is used for the anaerobic digestion process. And once we know about the gas yield as well as the fraction of methane in the biogas and the volume of the gas which is getting generated in the anaerobic digestion process then comes to the utility of the produced gas. So, once the gas is available from the digester then energy and the power available from the digester gas is also one of the important factor that the amount of energy as well as the power which is available in the produced gas and that depends on the composition of the gas which is getting produced in the anaerobic digester followed by the combustion efficiency. If the produced gas is being used for the thermal application then the combustion efficiency of the burners and boilers also plays a role here which is also one of the crucial factor followed by the heat of combustion per unit volume biogas and it is represented as HB. So, this is also one of the important factor because if the heat of combustion is calculated per unit volume of the biogas 
then it would be different than heat of combustion per unit volume of methane because after purification process the biogas can be converted into a pure methane form and in that case the heat of combustion per unit volume of the methane need to be considered. So, as we discussed before the required gas holder capacity is an important design parameter for the anaerobic digester that means as we discussed before this indicates the gas holder capacity. So, this is one of the important parameter in the anaerobic digester that the capacity of this gas holder need to be estimated properly so that it should be sufficient enough to acquire the entire volume of the gas which is generated during the anaerobic digestion process and that is also based on the consumption rate. For example, if the gas holder capacity is insufficient that means suppose this gas holder capacity is relatively smaller then part of the gas produced will be lost and the remaining volume of the gas will not be enough to match the demand right because the holder capacity itself is insufficient to acquire the enough volume of the gas which is getting generated during the anaerobic digestion process. So, as a result some of the gas will be lost and then the remaining volume of the gas will not be sufficient enough to match the demand or in case the gas holder is too large then construction cost will be unnecessarily high because then the size of the gas holder is sufficiently high whereas the volume of the gas which is getting produced is literally lower than that and then it incurs the construction cost which is unnecessarily high and therefore the gas holder must be made large enough or we can say optimum enough to acquire the entire volume of the gas which is consumed at a time so that then the gas which is getting produced at a specific rate can occupy the next cycle of gas in the digester after the gas is getting consumed at a time. Therefore, the gas holder must be made large enough to acquire the entire volume of the biogas consumed at a time and because of that the volume of the biogas is an important parameter to design the digester. So, here the volume of the biogas can be estimated using this simple equation here V suffix B represent the volume of biogas and these two terms here represent the mass and mass flow rate of dry input whereas this C represent the biogas yield per unit dry biomass and usually it is in the range of 0.2 to 0.4 meter cube per kg. So, once we know these values then we can estimate the volume of the biogas as well as the volume flow rate of the biogas that is represented as Q suffix B. And if you remember in the previous slide this particular term it represent the input parameter that is the mass and the mass flow rate to the digester and with the help of that volume of biogas as well as the volume flow rate of the biogas can be estimated. Similarly, volume of the fluid or slurry in the digester it is represented as V suffix F which is equal to M suffix O divided by its density right. So, once you know this two term then you can calculate the volume of slurry in the digester followed by that you can also estimate the volume flow rate of the fluid or slurry in the digester which is Q suffix F equal to the term here if you remember that is mass flow rate of dry input divided by the density of 
dry matter in the fluid. So, once we know these two terms, then we can calculate the volume flow rate of the fluid in the digester and here this term it represent the density of dry matter in the fluid or slurry and it is usually 50 kg per meter cube. So, please note that this is density of dry matter in the fluid and this is not the density of slurry and this Q suffix F here it represent the volume flow rate of the digester fluid and once we know this volume flow rate of the digester fluid then we can estimate the volume of the digester for that we need to know this term here that is T suffix R and it is the retention time of the material in the digester and it is usually 8 to 20 days. Once we know this value the retention time value and QF then we can calculate the volume of digester and that will be in the meter cube. Now, once we know the volume of the digester as well as the volume of the biogas which is generated in the digester, then with the help of that we can calculate the energy available from the biogas which is getting produced in the digester and it can be estimated using this equation which is E equal to this is the efficiency H suffix B into V suffix B here and V suffix B here is nothing but the volume of biogas and H suffix B represent the heat of combustion per unit volume of biogas and it is approximately 20 mega joule per meter cube. Please take a note of this. This is the heat of combustion per unit volume of biogas and not the methane and this term here it represent the combustion efficiency of a burner or boiler and it is usually in the range of 50 to 60 percent. Similarly, we can also estimate the thermal power available from a biogas which is produced in a given digester and it can be calculated using this equation P equal to again the combustion efficiency into the heat of combustion per unit volume of the biogas into QB. QB in the sense here is the equation is volume of flow rate of biogas and then once we know this term we can calculate the power available from a biogas and that will be in the mega joule per day. Now, suppose if CO2 is present in the biogas then it absorbs some of the heat of combustion of the methane. So, the overall energy efficiency decreases accordingly. Therefore, alternatively the energy available from digester gas can also be determined from the biogas composition, but for that purpose we need to estimate the composition of the biogas first and if we know that the composition of the biogas includes 60 percent methane and 30 or 35 percent CO2 and remaining traces of other gases then based on that considering the fraction of methane in the biogas we can also alternatively calculate the energy available from a digester gas but here it will be based on the methane percentage in the gas composition and that is termed as a fraction of methane in the biogas and here then equation would be in the form of combustion efficiency into H suffix m and here H suffix m represent the heat of combustion of methane and that is close to 28 mega joule per meter cube at standard temperature and pressure. Now, if you compare this equation with the previous equation here. So, here the energy available from the biogas estimated using this equation. 
so this hb represent here the heat of combustion per unit volume of biogas right because here it includes the total composition of biogas which includes methane co2 and traces of other gases however in this equation this h suffix m it represent the heat of combustion of methane so for that reason the fraction of methane present in the biogas need to be estimated and just by multiplying this term here we can easily calculate the net energy which is available from the digester gas but it is from a purified gas that is purely a methane as mentioned earlier also the biogas obtained directly from the digester contains fraction of methane between 0.5 to 0.7 however this methane percentage it can be also increased to nearly 100% by passing gas through a water or solvent to absorb the co2 and the traces of other gases as well so that gas can be cleaned up to produce a pure methane as a gas so now after learning about this sizing of the digester let us try to solve one example on this concept that is how to design a digester with the help of the given information so in this case here we need to calculate the volume of a biogas digester which is suitable for a output of 700 cows in a dairy farm and assume the retention time is around 18 days and also we need to estimate the power available from a digester here we need to do one small assumption that is the lower heating value of biogas is considered as 20 mega joule per meter cube and the burner efficiency is 60% and the given data here is like on average a dairy cow produces around 35 kg of total wet manure per day so here the manure is wet manure and this quantity is given on per day basis having a moisture content of 87% by weight and the density is 50 kg per meter cube and the biogas yield is around 0.25 meter cube per kg of dry manure so with the help of this given information we need to estimate these two terms that is volume of the biogas digester and the power available from a digester gas so let us try to solve this example so given data as we mentioned the retention time in the digester is given as 18 days burner efficiency is mentioned as 60% that is 0.6 and heat of combustion of biogas that is h suffix b is 20 mega joule per meter cube and that is lower heating value biogas yield that is represented as c is 0.25 meter cube per kg of dry manure and the density of the dry matter in the fluid or slurry that is represented as the term here is 50 kg per meter cube so i am just repeating again this is the density of dry matter and not the density of slurry so since we know the wet manure which is getting produced on daily basis and the fraction of dry manure is also known then with the help of this 
two term we can calculate the dry manure which is getting produced on a daily basis so this is the term which is wet manure on daily basis available and the moisture content in the wet manure is 87 percent so once you remove this moisture content from the manure so the remaining component is a dry part of the manure so once we multiply this two term we'll get the value in the form of 4.55 kilogram per day per cow so this is the dry manure which is getting produced on a daily basis similarly the mass flow rate of the dry manure input to the digester that is represented in this form is the dry manure produce into the number of cows in the dairy farm will get the value like 3185 kg per day but that is mass flow rate of the dry manure which is input to the digester now let us calculate first the volume of biogas digester which is suitable for the output of 700 cows in a dairy farm so as we know the equation of the volume of the digester it is given as v suffix d equal to q f into retention time and this specific term is given in this example however we need to calculate this q suffix f that is volume flow rate of the digester fluid and it can be calculated from the mass flow rate as we have just estimated this value here the mass flow rate and the density of dry matter is given in the example so the help of this two term we can calculate the volume rate of fluid in the digester that is 3185 kg per day divided by the density that is 50 kg per meter cube so once this get cancel we'll get the volume flow rate of the fluid as 63.7 meter cube per day and the retention time is 18 days so once we multiply these two term we'll get the volume of digester we'll get the volume of the digester as 63.7 into 18 days so once it cancels out the volume comes out to be around 1146.6 meter cube because if we look at the volume flow rate of the fluid in the digester the value itself is sufficiently high so accordingly the volume of the digester also will be significantly high for the specific retention time of 18 days so now once we know the volume of the digester now we can estimate the thermal power which is available from the digester gas so the power available from a biogas digester it can be estimated using this equation this is the combustion efficiency heat of combustion of biogas and q suffix b is volume rate of biogas and this volume rate of biogas it can be estimated using this equation here that is c into m not and this volume flow rate of biogas can be estimated using this equation here once these values are known then we can estimate this volume flow rate of biogas since we have already estimated this mass flow rate of dry manure input to the digester that is this particular term so it is around 3185 kilogram per day and the biogas yield is given as 0.25 meter cube per kg of dry manure and the burner efficiency is 60% and heat of combustion of biogas is given as 20 megajoule per meter cube 
Now, once we substitute this value in the above equation, we can estimate first the volume flow rate of biogas that is 0 0.25 into 3185. It comes out to be around 796.25 meter cube per day. And similarly, you can also calculate the power available from a biogas digester. This term here represent the efficiency that is 0 0.6 and the heat of combustion of biogas is 20 megajoule per meter cube into volume flow rate of biogas. So, the power available from the biogas digester it is around 9555 megajoule per day and we can convert this value into megawatt by using this simple unit conversion here. So, this is in the megajoule per day. So, you can convert into 24 hours first followed by minute and then seconds. So, the value would be around 0 0.1106 megajoule per second. So, megajoule per second is nothing but mega watt. So, the power available from this design digester will be around 0 0.1106 mega watt. So, I hope now it is clear how to estimate the volume of the digester as well as the thermal power available from the digester. So, now let us move on to the next example. So, in this example it has been asked to estimate the volume of a cow manure based biogas plant which is required for cooking needs of a family of 4 adults and lighting need with 300 CP lamps for 5 hours daily. Also need to estimate the required number of cows to feed this particular plant on daily basis and assume the biogas which is required for cooking is about 0.227 meter cube per person per day and the gas required for lighting a 100 cp candle power lamp is 0.126 meter cube per hour. So, here we have to make certain assumption that is retention time of slurry in the digester is 18 days, biogas yield 0 0.25 meter cube per kg of dry manure or dry matter and density of dry matter in the fluid or slurry is 50 kg per meter cube. So, with this given information let us try to calculate this volume of a plant which is required for the cooking needs and the lighting needs of a family. Since we know the gas which is required for a cooking for the family of 4 adults it is around 0.227 meter cube per person per day. So, since the family consists of 4 adults. So, once we multiply 4 into this value, we will get the value in the form of 0 0.908 meter cube per day. So, this is the amount of the gas which is required on daily basis for the cooking needs. And the gas required for lighting purpose is 0 0.126 into 3 lamps for 5 hours a day and which comes out to be around 1.8 890 meter cube of gas required on daily basis to meet the lighting needs. So, the total daily gas requirement is we can just sum up these two values and this is the total daily gas requirement of the family. Therefore, the volume flow rate of biogas that is Q suffix B is around 2.798 meter cube per day and the biogas yield is given as 0 0.25 meter cube per kg of dry matter and this value is given. So, based on these two values we can easily calculate the mass flow rate of dry input that is you can simply divide 
this by this term here and we will get the mass flow rate of dry input and that comes out to be around 11.192 kilogram per day and this is the equation if you remember we have used this equation here to calculate this mass flow rate. Similarly, the volume flow rate of the fluid in the digester can be estimated because the density of the dry matter is also given and this value we have just estimated. So, ratio of these two will be the volume flow rate of the fluid in the digester and once we know the volume flow rate of the fluid in the digester as well as the retention time of the fluid in the digester then we can easily calculate the volume of the digester. So, this equation if you remember it is used to calculate the volume of the digester in this equation this Q of value is known as well as the retention time is known. So, by multiplying these two values we can estimate the volume of digester and it comes out to be around 6.2664 meter cube. So, the volume of this cow manure based biogas plant is this much. Now, once we estimate the volume of digester, now we can estimate the, the number of cows which are required to feed this particular digester plant on daily basis. So, the mass of dry manure input it is known that is 11.192 kilogram per day. So, since this value is obtained from the given table in one of the lecture. So, with the help of this value we can calculate the total cows which are required. Here we can just take the ratio of these two term here and the value comes out to be around 2.45 which is equivalent to 3. So, this many number of cows required to feed the manure in the plant on daily basis. After learning about the principal factors which affect the sizing of the digester let us move on to the next important topic that is theoretical ethanol yield in alcoholic fermentation process. As we discussed before the theoretical ethanol yield is also one of the important concept in the alcoholic fermentation process. So, with the help of this concept we can easily estimate the theoretical ethanol yield for given feedstock material. So, if you recollect the fermentation reaction of C5 and C6 sugars are represented by using the following equation. So, the first equation here it represents the fermentation of the pentose sugar that is C5 sugar or also we can call it as a xylose which gives ethanol and CO2. Whereas, this second equation it represents the fermentation of the C6 sugar that is hexose and which gives ethanol and CO2 as a product and this table here it provides the important information about the specific compound and their molar mass. Since these feedstock materials are mostly a bio based feedstock material So, it mainly consists of C5 or C6 sugars. So, these molar masses of this compound would be useful while estimating the theoretical ethanol yield of a given feedstock material. So, we can represent the mole and the mass balance for the fermentation of the exhaust sugar in the following way. This 180.15 kilogram of a exhaust sugar here this is the molar mass of the exhaust sugar it produces around 92.16 kilogram of ethanol because if you see here the molar mass of the ethanol is 46.08 into 2 because it is producing 2 moles of ethanol so which comes out to be around 92.16 kilogram of ethanol and 2 moles of co2 that is 44.01 gram per mole into 2 that is 
kilogram carbon dioxide that is on the mass basis. So, simply if you have to calculate the theoretical ethanol yield now for the pure hexose sugar because here we have represented this equation in the form of the hexose sugar. So, that is why the theoretical ethanol yield of this pure hexose sugar would be around 92.16 that is kilogram of the ethanol which is getting produced from 180.15 kilogram of hexose sugar and once you take the ratio of these two it comes out to be 0 0.51 kilogram of ethanol per kilogram of sugar since we have considered pure hexose sugar for the fermentation process. And similarly, we can calculate the theoretical carbon dioxide yield for this pure hexose sugar and it is 88.02 kilogram of carbon dioxide divided by 180.15 kilogram of sugar because this much kilogram of sugar releasing around this much amount of carbon dioxide and this theoretical CO2 yield comes out to be around 0.49 kilogram of CO2 per kilogram of pure hexose sugar. So, similarly the theoretical ethanol yield and the theoretical carbon dioxide yield of real biomass sample can be estimated from the knowledge of the C6 sugar in the given biomass. For example, here the theoretical ethanol yield that is kilogram of ethanol per ton of the biomass, it will be estimated using these two terms because once we know the concentration of sugar in the biomass that is say the hexose sugar concentration in the biomass which is represented as C suffix S that is the concentration of sugar either it is C5 sugar or C6 sugar. So, with the help of that we can estimate the theoretical ethanol yield. So, this term here it represents the concentration of this specific sugar in the biomass that is kilogram of sugar per ton of biomass into 0.51 kilogram of ethanol per kilogram of sugar that we just estimated one slide back here that is 0.51 kilogram of ethanol per kilogram of sugar that we have estimated for the pure sugar. But once we know the concentration of the specific sugar, so by just multiplying this concentration here, we can calculate the theoretical ethanol yield for specific biobased feedstock material. Similarly, we can estimate the theoretical carbon dioxide yield that is kilogram of CO2 per ton of biomass and this term here it represents the concentration of again the sugar because as we know. 1 mole of this sugar it produces around 2 moles of CO2. So, once we know the concentration of this sugar and we also know the theoretical carbon dioxide yield from a pure hexose sugar that is 0.49 and once we multiply these terms we can calculate the theoretical carbon dioxide yield per ton of biomass and even this concentration of sugar in a given feedstock material can be estimated once we know the volumetric concentration of sugar in a biomass and this rho is the density. So, with the help of that we can calculate the concentration of sugar in the biomass. So, after learning about this important concept of theoretical ethanol yield in alcoholic fermentation process, let us move on to solve one simple example. So, here we can calculate the theoretical ethanol yield from the fermentation of a ton of sucrose. So, here the source material is given as sucrose and also determine the amount of carbon dioxide getting produced during this process. So, for this source material we need to estimate the theoretical ethanol yield as well as the carbon dioxide which is getting produced during this alcoholic fermentation process. So, we know the sucrose once the sucrose undergoes the hydrolysis 
process then it forms hexose sugars and then fermentation of this hexose sugar it results into the formation of ethanol and carbon dioxide as a product so as we know the hydrolysis of sucrose gives hexose sugar that is glucose and fructose and the fermentation of the hexose sugar here it results into the formation of ethanol and co2 as a product since the given value here is 1 ton of sucrose so for 1 ton of sucrose we need to estimate the ethanol yield as well as the carbon dioxide which is getting generated during this alcoholic fermentation process so from the mass balance here one mole of sucrose that is 342 gram per mole and this value we have obtained from the previous table produces 2 moles of hexose sugar right and that comes out to be around 360 gram per mole therefore one ton of sucrose produces around 1.0526 ton of hexose sugar and thus the concentration of this hexose sugar in the biomass if you can just estimate then it comes out to be around 1052.6 kg per ton of a sucrose here simply we have just converted this ton to a kilogram now to calculate this theoretical ethanol yield we know the theoretical ethanol yield that is kilogram of ethanol per ton of biomass equal to sugar concentration that is kilogram of sugar per ton of biomass into 0.51 that is the theoretical ethanol yield for the pure sugar and this indicates the concentration of the sugar in the per ton of sucrose so instead of writing here the biomass we can mention it as a sucrose and this value we know that is 1052.6 kg of sugar per ton of sucrose into 0.51 kg of ethanol per kg of sugar so once you multiply this two term the value comes out to be around 536.84 kg of ethanol per ton of sucrose therefore the theoretical ethanol yield of a ton of sucrose is 536.84 kg and similarly we can calculate the amount of co2 which is getting produced during this fermentation of 1 ton of sucrose that is theoretical carbon dioxide yield is represented in this form and this value is already estimated in the example and this is the theoretical carbon dioxide yield for a pure sugar and once you multiply this two term we will get the value in the form of 515.77 kg of co2 per ton of sucrose therefore theoretically 515.77 kg of carbon dioxide will be produced during the fermentation of 1 ton of sucrose so let us move on to the next example so here in the production of the ethanol the feedstock high in sugar content is first converted into glucose that is c6 sugar which is then fermented into ethanol consider the feedstock at 100 kg per hour of sugar beet whose sugar content represent around 30% of total mass how much maximum power can be 
इथेनॉल फ्यूएल इंटरनल कंबशन इंजिन प्रोड्यूस इफ द थर्मल इफिशियंसी ऑफ द इंजिन ऐट दिस मैक्सिम पावर इज थर्टी एट पर्सेंट दैट मीन्स द थर्मल इफिशियंसी ऑफ द इंजिन इज थर्टी एट पर्सेंट एंड द हीट ऑफ कंबशन ऑफ इथेनॉल इज गिवन एज ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन मेगा जूल पर किलोग्राम सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस गिवन इन्फॉर्मेशन वी नीड टू इस्टिमेट हाउ मच मैक्सिम पावर द इथेनॉल फ्यूएल इंटरनल कंबशन इंजिन प्रोड्यूसेस इफ द थर्मल इफिशियंसी इज गिवन एज थर्टी एट परसेंट लेट अस बिगिन विद द सोल्यूशन ऑफ दिस एग्जाम्पल हियर सो एज वी नो हियर द हंड्रेड किलोग्राम ऑफ बायोमास विथ शुगर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ थर्टी परसेंट दैट इज थर्टी किलोग्राम ऑफ शुगर पर हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ बायोमास एंड इट कम्स आउट टू बी अराउंड थर्टी के जी शुगर पर के जी ऑफ बायोमास एंड दैट इज द शुगर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड द थेरोटिकल इथेनॉल इल्ड एज वी नो थेरोटिकल इथेनॉल इल्ड इक्वल टू कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ शुगर इन टू पॉइंट फाइव वन दैट इज किलोग्राम ऑफ इथेनॉल पर किलोग्राम ऑफ द प्योर शुगर वंस वी सब्सटीट्यूट दिस वैल्यू ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ शुगर हियर विल गेट द थेरोटिकल इथेनॉल इल्ड एज पॉइंट वन फाइव थ्री किलोग्राम ऑफ इथेनॉल पर किलोग्राम ऑफ बायोमास हाउ एवर इन दिस एग्जाम्पल द फिस्टॉक इज गिवन एज बीट रूट शुगर एंड दैट इज एट हंड्रेड के जी पर आवर सो एट हंड्रेड के जी पर आवर ऑफ द शुगर बीट रूट इट कैन प्रोड्यूस अराउंड दिस मच अमाउंट ऑफ इथेनॉल पर आवर दैट इज सिंपली वी कैन यूज दिस थेरोटिकल इथेनॉल इल्ड वैल्यू एंड वी कैन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ शुगर बीट दैट इज अ मास ऑफ फिट स्टॉक पर आवर एंड आफ्टर दिस सिंपल मल्टीप्लीकेशन द वैल्यू कम्स आउट टू बी अराउंड फिफ्टीन पॉइंट थ्री किलोग्राम ऑफ इथेनॉल पर आवर सो इट मीन्स हियर हंड्रेड के जी पर आवर ऑफ शुगर बीट रूट कैन प्रोड्यूस फिफ्टीन पॉइंट थ्री किलोग्राम इथेनॉल पर आवर बिकॉज इन दिस केस द थेरोटिकल इथेनॉल ईल्ड ऑफ द स्पेसिफिक गिवन फिस्टॉक मटेरियल इज पॉइंट वन फाइव थ्री पर के जी ऑफ बायोमास सो बेस ऑन दैट फॉर हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ शुगर बीट रूट इट प्रोड्यूसेज अराउंड फिफ्टीन पॉइंट थ्री किलोग्राम ऑफ इथेनॉल पर आवर सो आफ्टर एस्टिमेटिंग दिस थेरोटिकल इथेनॉल ईल्ड लेट अस कैलकुलेट द मैक्सिम पावर विच कैन बी प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय इथेनॉल फ्यूएल इंटरनल कंबशन इंजिन एंड हियर द थर्मल इफिशियंसी ऑफ द इंजिन इज गिवन एज थर्टी एट परसेंट एंड द हीट ऑफ कंबशन ऑफ द इथेनॉल इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन मेगा जूल पर के जी एंड द इथेनॉल प्रोड्यूस्ड इज अराउंड फिफ्टीन पॉइंट थ्री के जी पर आवर सो द मैक्सिम पावर प्रोड्यूस बाय इथेनॉल फ्यूएल इंटरनल कंबशन इंजिन कैन बी इस्टिमेटेड using the ethanol produced value that is 15.3 kg per hour into its heat of combustion and we know the thermal efficiency of the engine is 38% so once we multiply this efficiency into heat of combustion into the amount of ethanol which is getting produced just multiplying this terms here will get the value in the form of 156.4 mega joule per hour and now we'll just try to convert this value into megawatt so here it is 156.4 mega joule per hour which is converted into minute and then into seconds and once you just do this small multiplication here the value comes out to be around 0.04344 mega joule per second so this mega joule per second can be converted into 43.44 kilo joule per second and this is 43.44 kilowatt so 1 kilo joule per second is equal to 1 kilo watt so maximum power which can be produced by ethanol fueled internal combustion engine is around 43.44 kilowatt 
and therefore the maximum 43.44 kilowatt of electrical power can be produced and these are the references uh, which are used for this specific lecture you can make a note of this and if required you can take the help of these references also while solving this example as well as while solving the other example for the different feedstock materials i hope now this is clear how to go for the sizing of the digester in a anaerobic digestion process as well as how to calculate the theoretical ethanol yield for the real biomass sample in a alcoholic fermentation process so the next lecture that will be the first lecture of the module 6 will discuss about chemical conversion processes types of feedstocks biodiesel production processes and different extraction processes thank you mm -hmm.